So in the first reading we have this, this story about how the Israelites complained. Oh, what a surprise. They seem to do that a lot. Okay, yes, they do do it a lot. Um, ten times I think it is in the book of Numbers. And God is trying to lead them along and teach them. Uh, I mean, here they're, they're saying, there's no food or water, we're disgusted with this wretched food. Wait, wait, there's no food or water? There's no food, and yet we're disgusted with the food that's there. And what is this food that they're disgusted with? Manna from heaven. The bread of angels. They can't stand it anymore. God providing for them. God doesn't always provide in such a way that titillates us. But he always provides if we trust in him. And so they complain and then the seraph serpents are sent and then they repent. And pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord to take the serpents away from us. And Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said, Make this seraph and mount it on a pole and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Now, two things that struck me about this as I was reading it today. And one is, they're praying to the Lord to take the serpents away from them, which is all well and good if you haven't been bitten. But for those who have been bitten, well, too bad. <laughs> You're on your way out. But, but, but maybe at least for those of us who haven't been bitten yet, he'll, he'll take those serpents away. The other thing I noticed is that the Lord says, whoever looks at it after being bitten will live doesn't say necessarily that they'll have this immediate, every, the poison will be out of the system and they won't suffer. But he does say they'll live. Now, I remember Bishop Sheen saying, there's nothing in looking at a bronze serpent that will take away the snake bite, that will cure snake bite. But, because God commanded it, and then they looked in faith. They were then able to be healed of the poisonous serpent bite. And what, what he then said is, and so when we look at Jesus, who looks like the effects of our sin, but when we look on him with faith, then we are healed of the poison, not of the serpents, but of sin. We are healed of the poison of sin. Does that mean we won't suffer? No, but we will live. This is the beautiful thing where we have at adoration, where we don't just look at a statue of our Lord, which is beautiful enough, and can remind us and draw us into his heart. Or a picture of our Lord, which is like a, a, a highway into his heart. But rather, we get to look at our Lord himself. True, veiled behind the image of bread. But truly him. Truly here. We get to gaze on Jesus. And as I say at Mass, this is my body given up for you, then I raise up our Lord. And Jesus says, when you see the Son of Man, lift, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am. And of course, I am is the name of God. I am who am. If you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. And we have this opportunity then to gaze upon him with faith. And maybe we say, like the Father at the foot of the mountain, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. Or maybe we say, like Thomas, my Lord and my God. But whatever it is, we have that opportunity to gaze on the Lord with faith. And as we gaze on him, he takes away the poison of sin. He gives us life. May we make sure that 
when we go by our Lord, when we see him, we look at him. We gaze upon him with faith, whether it be our Lord in adoration, whether it be our Lord at the Mass, whether it be our Lord in the tabernacle as we're passing, that we gaze on him with faith so that he can take away the poison of sin that is alive in our hearts.